Hello and welcome to an edible millinery video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm making these edible hats. Christmas is coming up and who doesn't love gingerbread? So, welcome to my kitchen. Let's talk about the ingredients. What have we got here? This looks a bit weird. This is dark malt mixed with some water and this gives a very authentic Eastern European taste to the gingerbread. It's got a special structure that makes gingerbread better. That's the science sorted. What I've got here is a stand mixer with a silicon paddle ready to go. You can also mix this by hand, which I'll show later on. Flour already in the bowl, and to this I'm adding my butter. Next, everything else goes in because I believe in the baking circles they call this an all-in-one recipe. This is dark brown sugar. All the spices, which you can vary to your taste, so you don't have to do the exact quantities that I did. Some milk. Get the treacle out with a silicon spoon. This is very sticky. Now, with the ingredients, there are obviously substitutions that you can do, and I might list them in the description box below because it is a bit of a weird set of ingredients that not everyone might have access to. But this is my favorite recipe that I have settled on after... How many years of experimentation, husband? How long have we been married? We've been married now for five years. Right, five years of gingerbread experiments then. The malt goes in. This really is a magic ingredient. And what makes it so magic? I have no idea. It just tastes amazing. Look, lick the spoon. What's that taste like? It, yes, yeah, it's sticky. It's a bit kind of a bit beery. Let's mix. Come and look. Can you see? how the mixture is now peeling away from the walls, especially kind of over here. That means that it's mixed enough. This is going to be ready to roll out straight away. Set the oven to the temperature, which I think is 160 degrees, to heat up. And my oven is a fan oven. What would you have if it wasn't a fan? Uh, plus 20 degrees, so 180, yeah. That's my rule of thumb, I don't know how accurate that is. In the first pass of baking, I shall be making one part of a kokoshnik, which will be <laughs> like this. Then I shall be making a kalo half hat, which will be like this. And then this is one sixth of a top hat, trust me rolling pin at the ready and I've got it set to four millimeters that's how deep my biscuit is going to be ideally it would be five millimeters thick but I don't have a a rolling pin end <laughs> I don't know what the technical term for that is so this is a resizable rolling pin it is a resizable rolling pin I do believe you got it for me for Christmas three years ago you can also put water inside it and freezer it in the oven if you're rolling out really short pastry. Freezer it in the oven? No, freezer it in the freezer. <laughs> so that looks like a good amount. Because once again, as I was saying earlier about biscuits getting tough, if I roller it out, scrunch it back up, roller it out, scrunch it back up, it will get tougher and tougher as it goes. So one slight problem is that I'm seeing this kind of ripple pattern in it, which does mean that it's a little bit too warm. The butter is a bit too warm, but I'm going to persevere. Ideally, this should actually go in the fridge for maybe 20 minutes, 
just to get rid of this kind of pattern. I'm going to cut out the callow half hat shape. Find a good place for it, which I think is about here. And I don't want to go all the way up to the edges because when I put this in the oven, it's got to have a lip to it. And yes, I know this is a silicon mat and you really shouldn't use knives on it, but never mind. I'm, I'm not going to press down like I would if I was chopping an onion. Gently cut around the callow half hat shape. And this is a sharp knife. You need to use a sharp knife, just like with pastry. For method number two, I'm going to melt the butter in the microwave. Melting the butter shouldn't take too long. That might need another 30 seconds, but before we put that on, let me show you this. Come and see. If you want to mix by hand, mix all the sugars and the syrups and the milk, everything that's wet, together. Mm, you can taste this. Tell us what it tastes like. Oh, has that got ginger in it already? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I can taste the ginger. It's um, less beery than it was before. And if I was being a really good girl, I would sift it. But who's got time for that? This is structural gingerbread. A technical baking point. You might need more or less flour than me, depending on where you live. Flour does that. It's just sometimes it's a bit more moist, sometimes it's a bit more dry. Baking is a science, but it's also an art, and that's where the art comes in. It's, do you really need all of that ingredient to go in? And the answer is probably sometimes no. So if you live in the UK, and you live in a new build flat with very good quality heating, you can probably stick to the same recipe as me. But maybe if you live um, in the countryside and you're in a cottage, you will probably need more flour than me because you might have moister air or something. You see now it's too soft to roll out, so I'm going to have to gather it together and either pop it in an airtight container or cover it in cling film. I don't have an airtight container big enough to contain this mass of gingerbread, so I'm going to wrap it in some cling film with clean hands. Okay. This is all very much experimental because my plan is to, once it's baked, to leave it to dry on the hat blocks. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And we just have a lot of biscuits to get through. And if it works, that's pretty awesome. And it's the most impressive gingerbread structure I will have made to date. And last year I made a de Stahl house and I'll link to that video in the top right because I'm quite proud of how that turned out last year. I hope I've remembered to put in all the ingredients. Because, I mean, like some recipes have eggs in them and things and I'm not really sure why you need eggs in gingerbread. But this one doesn't have eggs and I think that's what's throwing me a bit because normally I make cakes and not biscuits and obviously that's all very egg related. It's ready to go in the oven. Oh, 
I forgot to peel these off. That would be very silly. Don't bake paper in the oven. Twenty minutes. If you weren't making structural gingerbread, you'd put it in for fifteen minutes just because it will be a little bit softer, a little bit easier to eat. Whereas when it's in for 20 minutes, it really does become rock hard. But that's good for structure. I want to put some Christmas lights into the top hat. <laughs> I feel like I've set the difficulty level to like 100% and this is the first time I'm doing this. You'll see what's going on when the design comes together. That's the center. I did not think this through, but I think I'm going to go like this, and then flip! <laughs> did that work? Oh my goodness, it actually did work. While it's still hot, get the biscuit ends off. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's so hot. Aha, there we go. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. I won't bake on the silicon mat next time because if I if I had baking paper I could just right Oh no that, that didn't work Okay callow's not going to work did you see what happened like it just completely fell off Okay never mind this is just a <laughs> This will be just a biscuit then I mean, I could have maybe done it in three sections, like pattern piece it together in three sections. Okay, never mind. That one didn't work. Never mind. This one should be easier because I baked it on a thinner silicon mat. Right. So the theory is, is this one should be less hot. Yes, it's definitely less hot. And let's try and position it. Right. This feels a lot better to me now, actually. I'm discovering that I think there is a critical mass point with these, where if it's too long, it's too heavy, and so the drape is too heavy and the biscuit starts to crack with gravity. Back into the oven I go. This time, I have baked it on a sheet of baking paper, so hopefully it's less hot to handle. That's good. And then I, I guess I'll just try and do it in exactly the same way. Like, so placing it over the top and flip, take the paper off, and almost, it's almost, ah, now the biscuit is hot. Now I have to work fast because the biscuit will solidify. It starts solidifying as soon as it comes out of the oven. This is the circle for the brim. So it's, it's this one that I will be following. Here is the top bit with some slightly unsuccessful repairs, but I'm hoping to get that better in a bit. So for the 
top, the top needs to be on the outside. I don't think this is going to fit you, husband. I think it's a bit too egg-shaped. Heads are ovals, but they're not exactly eggs. There'll be a front and a back somewhere around there. And I think we'll go for... What's a fedora brim? You were signalling about four centimetres. I'd say that's a trilby. This ruler is five centimetres. So I'll do the five centimetre line and then maybe go up to six and a half because I measured one of your fedoras earlier and your fedora was six and a half centimetres brim. I should point out here, I don't make men's hats. I'm not a hatter, I'm a milliner. But we're trying new things. I'll just kind of average this out with the scissors when I go. So I'm adding a centimetre and a half, so the brim will end up being six and a half centimetres. Yes? Yes. That'll do. If I was making this out of actual fabric, I'd get a curved ruler and smooth out all the curves, but I'm just going to average it with the scissors. It's just biscuit. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. I'm, oh, it's actually a bit small. Oh, it's, it's because... It's because egg, and you're not an egg. I'm not an egg. I mean, it will perch on you. Yeah. It will perch on you. It will perch, yeah. Here is my top hat brim pattern. And this is my polyurethane self-made block, which is actually a mushroom shape. But I'm going to employ the same technique that I did on my Bow Baton's hat video, which I'll link up here. And the technique was to prop up the edge over here. And what I'm going to use is socks. Here's how to make a sock sausage. Second pair of long socks. So you need six socks. You need two pairs of ladies' long socks and one pair of men's socks to make two sock sausages. I'm very pleased with myself. Ta-da! Dressmaking pins. And I want to make sure to maintain this curl, so what I'm going to do is position this... The idea with the sock is I want something flexible so that I can keep that curve in there. Do you see the curve? I can play with it later, I guess. Or I can bring it forwards and back. So I'll just do the second side now. This is the other plus of socks. They have a natural bend to them where the heel is. You see, I don't make it up as I go along. Apart from when you do. <laughs> this would also work if you wanted to do this in felt. I mean, I haven't tried it, but I'm like 99.9% .9 certain that this would work. <laughs> With actual millinery materials. Oh, the socks should be cling filmed. I didn't think of that. Oh, I should also mention that I, had, I did re-cling film the PU foam block because PU foam is most certainly not food safe. Obviously, if you have a wooden block, do this on a wooden block, it's much safer. That'll do, right. Cutting around it, once again, exactly like with the other pieces, cutting out the shape, but leaving a gingerbread border around it. If you're going to do this with felt, you don't need to leave a border and you definitely don't need to put it in the oven. Perfect. 
20 minute tea break. Off I plonk. I can just about see my front and back lines on the block. That brim is very, very upturned. The only problem is it looks like a toilet seat. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe that's what I'll make next year. Oh, I'm so worried that there's a crack there, but there's nothing I can do now. Isomalt time. For those who don't know, isomalt is just sugar glass. So instead of making this, you could use those glacier mints. Just melt them up in a saucepan and do the same thing that I'm going to do with isomalt. But if you don't like the peppermint flavor or are allergic to menthol like I am, you're going to have to make your own isomalt from scratch. And all you do is you put everything in a saucepan and heat it up to 150 degrees. Before I show you the isomalt process, let me show you the setup, so come over here. These are two crown blocks to get the curve. This is the side of the gingerbread top hat, which has cracks in it, but the isomalt will actually help with that. It'll help fuse everything together. And instead of cling film or baking paper, I've covered these in foil because through many years of experimentation, I've found that foil gives the clearest glass result. You need to set this up before you start making the isomalt. Food colouring, which is blue, because isomalt sometimes goes yellow if you slightly overdo it and it starts to caramelise. And to counteract the yellow, colour theory, you pop in some blue. Once again, millinery advice. Now on dyes. I have a video on um, acid dyes for millinery if you'd like to watch it, so it's up here. Learn all about the colour theory. And the best implement for pouring is a spoon. You try and get some of those bubbles out and just very carefully without getting it onto the outside. Ooh. Let's work on some icing. This is day two of my hat gingerbread house extravaganza and today I'm going to be assembling and icing everything. You'd think it would be much easier to assemble it first and then ice it, but actually it's easier the other way around. You can really get into all the curves and do the nice intricate things without worrying about the structure. And then once it's all decorated, you just have to squish it all together. Right, let's see, will it fall apart? Oh no, it's pretty fine. Shall I put it on my head? Okay. Well, it definitely fits me. I don't think it will fit you. That's all right. Oh, it's delicate. Okay, we have some structural deficiencies. Okay, no, we're just going to go for it and know that it will fall apart. Now, the edge is not very pretty. It needs an edge bind. This is the same icing as the cement icing, it's just white. You know, I'm really not the best at icing. So look, I've got these really fun Christmas things. I want to use those on it. Oh, 
I really need to start assembling this because the curve is starting to get deformed. What I'm going to do is use the brown cement icing, starting on the one half. Oh, it looks so festive. <laughs> I will reinforce the inside with more of the brown cement icing, just like a lot of it. It doesn't matter how messy the inside is. The inside is all about support. To do the joins on the upsides, I'm going to use white because we've got white patterns and it'll be less noticeable. Again, a much thicker line than I would normally do because this is for structure. And then the dark brown on the base. Right. I'm going to leave this to solidify now and work on the other two top bits. After all that baking, assembling and decorating, I think it's time for the taste test. Bring on the husband. Would you like to eat some gingerbread? I would love to eat some gingerbread. <laughs> do you want to start with the one on my head? No. no, do you know what? Actually, this one, I'm too precious over. I'm going to take it off and it's too pretty. I'm just going to marvel at it for the whole Christmas okay. period, if that's okay with you. Do you want to start with the top hat? I which... think we should start with the top hat. Shall that's I place way. it on you? Yes, go on. Okay, yeah. um, you're going to have to nod down for the Whoop. camera. It's a half top hat. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to let go. Wow. Is it heavy? It, it's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> do, do you want to eat it now? No, that's on. Is it good? It is good. I'll try a bit. It's very much like the off-cuts that I've been chewing on for the last two weeks. <laughs> I mean, two yeah, days. it's not going to taste any different. This one will taste different because mm. it's covered in icing sugar. I want to look at you. There we go. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was a lot of pressure on my okay. brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't quite size it correctly. My maths must have been wrong. It's quite nice. Well, does it taste nice? 
Yeah, it does. It tastes absolutely delicious. I can't wait to get to later all these icing bits and the icing mod. I quite like. You want some icing? Out. You want me to eat this one now? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Is that too sugary, the icing? Not too sugary for me. <laughs> you want to give me a mark out of ten? The top hat, despite the break, is a nine out of ten. <laughs> because I cannot think of any way you could have done this any better. Oh, It's absolutely spot on. The, the break, I think, was down to the kitten, possibly, because <laughs> before, just before we discovered the break, the cat leapt off the table. <laughs> so I think it may have been her fault. <laughs> I don't know how you can improve it. Just the crack was the only thing that let it down. Kokoshnik. Also, mm -hmm. oh. Which one's your favourite? Do you like the Tulski Prianik or the Snigurichka? I like the winteriness of this. Would Maybe you like to has... say it? Go on. Snigurichka. Snigurichka. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and this one? Um, Tulski Prianik. Tulski Prianik. Now, is the pranik is biscuit. It's it's the gingerbread type gingerbread, of biscuit, yeah. yeah. Okay. Although sometimes it's flavoured minty and mm. sometimes it's flavoured chocolate. Okay. But the decoration is very specific. Mm. Mm. Do you want to explain the decoration? No. I, I think I'm going to have another bite of this. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You now have until the new year to finish eating all of this. I've got to eat my hat. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>